Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back to another full electric van. I've said in the past that the true tipping point, for me anyway, from going from combustion engine to electric vehicles is when you get commercial and tradespeople starting to use them. That's when the real tipping point will happen for me. In terms of private vehicles, we're almost there, but once these start going full electric and reasonable real world usage sort of scenarios that's again when for me electric vehicles have truly arrived now the last one i tested on the channel was the mercedes e vito it did 60 70 miles in the real world and couldn't rapid charge so have the psa group because this is the citroen e dispatch which is very similar to the vivaro and the uh, partner i believe the peugeot uh, have they listened and learned from past mistakes from other manufacturers and of course they have done electric vehicles in the past themselves. But is this a real world van? Can it be used by more than just the niche, the 1% doing the final mile deliveries or inner cities only? Because if you can, maybe we are near that tipping point. And of course, a courier drives past me as I'm filming this in first gear doing 30 miles an hour. Standard stuff. Now, as in the previous video, I am, of course, in my garage slash driveway due to the current restrictions. Uh, it does have a benefit, though, because it's about minus two outside and it's raining and it's really windy. So I'm a little bit warmer at the moment, but that's why I'm in here. Right. OK, let's have a look at this on the outside inside and then we'll take it for a drive as usual. It's clearly a Citroen. You've got this massive logo along the front. Um, and as far as van goes, it's not bad. I should point out that this is a very high spec version, so not everything you see inside and out will be uh, uh, standard. It will. Be, you know, there's a lot of options on this. You've got the little E blue here. I'm not sure if you can make it out there. That's the only real clue that this is full electric. And that's a good thing for me because there's no real compromises here. What you get in the diesel version, you get in the electric version. There's no losses or, you know, like sometimes you lose a bit of boot space due to, ba due to batteries. There's none of that on this. Uh, but in terms of looks, you've got some LEDs down here. You've got some headlights. It's, it's a van. And uh, you know what? I think it looks all right for a van. From the side, it's a van. It's got van features. It's got a sliding door at the uh, both sides. Good. Oh, Jesus, the wind is strong. <laughs> Good entry here. The only real thing of note, because it is just a van, is this bit. The charging flap. Now that's interesting because this thing charges not just at seven kilowatts like the Evito does, it goes up to 100 kilowatts on CCS. That is the difference between this and a lot of other vans out there. Rapid charging capabilities. Now before my hands freeze, I'm going to spin it around and get it back in the garage so we can look in the rear because that's what you get a van for, isn't it? From the rear, very much like every other van, it's uh, only a real clue again that it's electric is that you've got a little blue E next to the dispatch logo. And of course there are varying options which I'm, I'm going to go through at this moment. But let's have a look at the door. Load space. This is the thing that effectively people buy vans for. To see what you can get in the back of it. Now again, as I said before, the one thing I do like about this is that it's exactly the same load area as the diesel version. There are no compromises or losses due to the electric side. And, it's pretty good. You've effectively got three different wheelbases in this, short, medium, and large, effectively. Uh, 4.6 cubic square meters for the smallest one, 5.3 for the middle, and 6.1 for the long wheelbase version. There are two battery sizes, I'll mention those and ranges in a second. Uh, but overall, this is exactly the same as the diesel version of the PSA Group stuff. In this case, the Dispatch. Now there is one thing which I think is missing in electric vehicle world at the moment, which I'm really looking forward to. And I think this could be the first one that's doable. And that's a camper van, a motorhome. Obviously it needs converting, but this has got the range. Again, I'll mention that in a second. It's got the rapid charging capability, 100 kilowatts if you can uh, find a charger that matches it anyway. 
and uh, if you get for the long wheel base version and do the uh, thing to the roof I think this could be a cracking camper van not just a short range one but one that can actually be used on longer distances maybe not cross-continental but certainly in the UK so I'm really looking forward to proper full electric camper vans overall it's a van I'm just gutted that I don't have anything to take to the tip I've already done all that when the Vito turned up so uh, yeah unfortunately I can't load it up and really show you what it can carry but yeah I think if you're familiar with the Citroen Dispatch you're familiar with the electric one again that's the whole benefit of this there's no compromises for electric right let me show you around the inside as in the uh, cabin anyway and then we'll take it and see what it's like on the road and I can mention those mention those battery sizes because these match Tesla Ooh, ooh, great. I can't wait until do one of these in summer. Uh, okay, standard steering wheel, nothing special there. Standard switch gear here. Lots of hardware in plastics. You've got a little bit of storage there, and you've got a huge door bin there for various bottles and whatever else you want to put in. Got a bit of storage here. You've got some more storage there, which, uh, I don't know, don't think a Sun newspaper would fit in that, so... It's actually quite deep, is that one? So that's pretty good. Uh, standard dispatch interior. There's nothing different again with the electric version. Let me get the keys, which, unlike a lot of electric vehicles, is an actual key. This has got one of the nicer dash binnacles for me. Good display. You've got the kind of rev counter chargeometer on the right-hand side, speedo, of course, and the center display that gives you various bits of information, which, if I press this here, changes to give you all the information about how... Uh, efficient you are various other stuff which I can't show you until I'm actually driving um, so yeah it's a really nice and easy to read display uh, currently we have a range of 96 miles it predicts and there's about 60% left so again I'll come to the battery in a second and look we have a heads-up display on a van that is an optional extra we've got the uh, sat nav as well which again this has got an optional extra on it but uh, you do have that on the vans you've got apple carplay and android auto as well lots of pretty solid buttons actual uh, standard dispatch gear so there's nothing amazingly different a little bit of storage here got 12 volt adapter there of course usb socket this is the gear selector i'll uh, i'll have to say this i'm not as much of a fan of as an actual kind of you know a natural a gear stick it's, it's just a bit i don't know small when you want to kind of you know when you're turning around quickly and you, you're doing that click doing that again click it's very small you have to literally use your fingers so you can't you can't just do it without looking by grabbing something and pushing it down uh, into reverse or drive or something like that so i would like something a little bit bigger and something to hold on to there it is of course a three-seater as most vans of this size are reasonable seats i'm pretty comfortable as the driver uh you've got a little bit of a nudge splodging going on there if you are in the middle seat but uh yeah it's a bit narrow you're going to find a bit of a struggle there i suppose but again it's the same as uh, all the other type of uh, vans like this and standard dispatch you got a decent size glove box there and a bit more storage a bit more storage down there and again a decent door bin there's nothing up top other than a few um yeah, light switches and a huge uh, sun visor so ultimately i would say that as a whole this dashboard is actually pretty good for a van uh, i'm going to turn the heater on because i'm absolutely freezing right now and look you can see how much it's using for the heater on the left side there that's the battery state of charge and that's how much the heat is using um so i'm just going up to a full full heat please oh that's beautiful it's beautiful right let's talk about battery sizes something i've been drip feeding throughout the video these come in two the 50 kilowatt hour battery and a 75 kilowatt hour battery which is pretty much identical to a tesla model 3 a 50 and a 75 i mean that's just exactly what you want out of a van very good range you can charge it up to 100 kilowatts again on a charger you can find that matches that either way combine them together and you get the usability of not a tesla but a good range ev at least by today's standards so that rapid charging doesn't just mean again that you can do long journeys it means that if you do let's say 200 miles and the van's only going to do 160 70 or something like that I'll, I'll come to the range later on in the video 
you, you just need to plug it into a rapid charger for like 10 minutes and then you've got the rest of your journey or you plug it in whilst you're having a bit of lunch or something like that so this opens up vanness in electric car world to couriers people doing installations in a reasonable distance with a 30 minute stop you've got i reckon if you leave with a full charge anyway at least 220 mile range minimum in the real world and that's average driving not economical driving so i guess as a van driver if you're watching this will you do over 200 miles in a day of course there are going to be people out there that do that travel up and down the motorway i would say the worst case scenario and the best case scenario will be somewhere in between two miles per kilowatt hour and two and a half miles per kilowatt hour you will get more than that if you try hard enough and you drive economically in summer and again if you drive like a lunatic in the middle of winter with your heater on full the entire time it might go a little bit lower but i would say the year round average would be between 2 and 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour so if you had the 50 kilowatt hour version you would get a range of between 100 and 125 miles in the real world with stuff in the back quite a lot of stuff uh winter summer that's the average remember it will be higher in summer and maybe a little bit lower in winter in the 75 kilowatt hour version then you would probably get between 150 and 100 and i'll say 190 187 ish uh, so 150 190 miles a real world range again in the uh, bigger battery version yeah i'm losing 10 or 15 minutes that i wouldn't normally do in my diesel version but your fuel cost will be a tenth a tenth of that of diesel it will of course be a lot more than that uh, if you were rapid charging only but that's for a different video i have a video in my channel in fact several but one i'm thinking of where it actually explains the costs in terms of fuel versus petrol or diesel and electric if you want to have a look at that but this is the compromise and let's face it life is full of compromises so let me mention the prices there are quite a few options of course you've got the three different wheelbases and you've got the two different battery sizes effectively the cheapest battery size on the cheapest van with no options starts at just over £25,000. That's excluding VAT, of course. So you're going to have the VAT on top of that. Uh, if you go for the bigger battery version uh, and uh, you know, basically the most expensive one, this starts, because obviously there are optional extras, uh, this starts at just under, well, or rather just over £34,000 excluding VAT. There seems to be about six, six and a half, seven thousand pound difference, depending on wheelbase, between the smaller battery version and the bigger battery version. Um, that's up to your usage pattern, isn't it? If you're a delivery driver, um, a courier, or a, a tradesman, let me know in the comments whether this would suit you. What does a courier do on average? I know those in London will do far less than those in North Yorkshire, for example. But I think this would do a courier certainly if you wanted to stop for 15 minutes you know have a bite to eat and give yourself enough range to complete your rounds as it were just looking on Sitchin's website at the moment because it's probably worth looking at contract hire vat excluded again the cheapest one on their website will cost you 522 pounds 56p per month according to Sitchin's website go and have a look and play around with the van configurator all you like uh, so that's 522 quid a month uh, vat not included the cheapest diesel version is nearly 260 pounds per month that's for the blue hdi 100 uh, so that's you know like the the poverty spec one with the smallest diesel engine uh, so yeah you're talking a big difference however for that extra 250 to 300 pounds extra in costs how much are you saving in fuel i guess that's the trade-off there isn't it now, before I set off on the actual road for this uh, video in, I feel like I'm, I need to get into van mode. <sighs> Oi, ooh, 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 flashlights of the car in front, boobs, 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 lads, lads, lads. Right, I'm ready to set off now. Let's go. Oh, and there's my lovely wife. Say hello. Am I on the video? Oh. Now, as it's around the corner from me, I think I need to take this on the twisty country roads because certainly around me a lot of the roads are like that and any time i'm on those twisty roads in my car and a van is coming the other way they never ever 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 slow down you know when it's, it's like well this is a bit narrow let's let's slow down guys so we can let each other past 
no van driver ever does that, ever. I can see the end of the bonnet, so that's all right. So that means I can follow the guy in front within a good, like, you know, less than a foot, I reckon. It's probably worth saying that uh, in the last video I did in the EV tour, <laughs> someone actually posted up, oh, I think uh, these jokes about van drivers may be slightly offensive. They, they, you may upset some van drivers. <laughs> I mean, God, is that the internet we live on these days? Not to 60 in this van is possible. <laughs> no, sorry, it's about 14 and a bit seconds. It's actually reasonable acceleration. It's more than enough. Kind of similar to the diesel, to be honest, but it's very progressive. Bit of wind noise, I have to say. <laughs> In fact, let me put the heater on before I freeze to death again. Good visibility. I've got uh, perfect views of the North Yorkshire countryside in this really sunny December. Sorry, January. I've forgotten what month, what week, what year it is with the current situation of the fact that 2020 was a wipeout wasn't it january's not looking any better oh look at you su venus you're going to wait for me i am going to say thank you though but ha -ha! maybe it's the size of the vehicle i do like this it sounds bizarre but compared to the mercedes ev tour forgetting range and all that I'm, I'm just talking about driving experience the electric v tour was quite nice to drive actually but this is better i have just noticed something rather strange with this particular van it's got a rear view mirror see what will happen now in the comments i predict is that someone will go yeah way too expensive you know i'm paying another 250 quid a month on a lease anyway uh for you know, no no i'll just stick one with diesel that's today's technology in five years time in 10 years time when they're a lot cheaper you know, probably better range, quicker charging, then it will be, for me, probably a no-brainer. Let's see what it's like in tight spaces. Da -da -da. Again, I want to... This has got the reverse packing camera, which does make it significantly easier, I have to say, and the sensors and whatnot. But... Uh, as an optional extra, it's up to you whether you think that's worthwhile or not. Given the amount of vans that you see driving around with big dents in the rear, certainly the doors, I'd probably spec the camera and the, the sensors, to be honest, just to stop that happening. I think I'm done now, guys. I'm going to uh, have fun driving around in this for the next few days before it goes back. So thank you for watching. Uh, I, I do want to get more commercial full electric vans on this channel because, again, I think these are the key to proper EV adoption. So, uh, yep, yeah, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe, like, blah, 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 or all the usual crap that YouTube channels say. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.